Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Dr. Sabrina Rondo. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Ottawa and the University of Guelph in Canada. Um, broadly speaking, I'm a bioecologist. I'm studying wild pollinators and agroecosystems, and my most recent research is focused on uh, understanding bees' responses and resilience to underground threats. And in this seminar, I'm going to talk about the resilience of bumblebee queens to flooding. So my talk is about a paper that was just published in Biology Letters. The study was conducted by myself and my postdoc advisor, Dr. Nigel Rain at the University of Guelph. And in this paper, we looked at what happens to bumblebee queens when they are overwintering on the ground and the ground is suddenly flooded. Because this um, scenario certainly happens in nature, it would be, would be um, deadly for most terrestrial organisms. Um, and with current um, climate change and the predicted increase in extreme events like flooding, there is this concern that underground flooding can further contribute to current um, bumblebee declines. Um, we have a very large diversity of bees in the world and in Ontario and Canada where the study was conducted. Um, we're talking about over 20,000 different species of wild bees around the world. Um, more than 900 species in Canada and more than 400 species in Ontario. And in addition to having different shapes, different sizes, different colors, these different species also have different ecology. And although it's true that virtually all bees share a diet of floral pollen and nectar, there are very important difference, uh, differences in life history traits among species. And one major difference pertains to where those bees nest and hibernate. So among wild bees, some will nest in holes and dead woods, hollow stems, stone walls, or even snail shells. We call these bees the cavity nesters. Either they will excavate their own nest in wood or they um, use pre-existing cavities. Then we have the ground nesting bees, so bees that dig underground nests. That's about 70% of all bee species that are ground nesters. And um, there are also the bumblebees that will often nest in pre-existing cavities, either above or below ground, often in old rodent burrows. And although bumblebees do not excavate underground nests per se, they will still hibernate underground, uh, or at least bumblebee queens do. So if we look at the bumblebee life cycle, um, bumblebees are social insects that live in colonies consisting of a single queen, several female workers and males. And in temperate regions like here in Canada, most bumblebee species have an annual colony cycle where only the new queens um, produced by the colony in late summer survive the winter by hibernating on the ground for six to nine months in a hibernaculum. So this is what we call the underground cavity inside which um, the queens hibernate. And so in the following spring, these new queens emerge from hibernation to found new colonies. And this means that during hibernation, bumblebee queens may face a number of threats related to spending time uh, underground. Um, so in my research, I'm interested in the threats that bees may be facing from their exposure to soil, um, threats such as exposure to pesticides from residues in soil, um, flooding, predators and parasites, soil disturbances from farming practices, for instance, tillage, climate change, and molds. And it is surprising how little we know about any of these underground threats to bees, one of the main reason being that the nesting and overwintering ecology of ground dwelling bees are very hard um, to study due to the difficulty of first locating the nest or overwintering sites and then studying what's happening inside those nests um, or hibernacula. And from all of these different threats, um, today I'm going to talk about flooding. So, um, this is what I mean when I say flooding. I'm talking about the covering or um, submerging of normally dry land with a large amount of water. It could be caused by the overflow of a waterway or heavy rainfall or snow melt, for instance, in the spring. And so you can imagine that if bees were nesting or overwintering in the soil there, um, it might not be an ideal scenario for them. In nature, bumblebee queens typically will overwinter in very well-drained sandy soil and in sloping ground. And the scientific community has always thought that it is to avoid scenarios like this. So to avoid extreme humidity and flooding. Now, um, during my PhD at the University of Guelph, I was working on an experiment with overwintering bumblebee queens of the Eastern common bumblebee, Bumbus impatiens. 
Um, Bumbus impatiens is a very uh, common bumblebee species in Eastern North America, and it is available commercially, which makes it a great study organism for experimental research. I mentioned um, the term diapause. So diapause is a temporary state of suspended growth and reproduction that occurs during um, unfavorable conditions. And in this case, um, so during the, during the winter. Um, so in this presentation, I will um, use the terms diapause, overwintering, and hibernation as synonyms. Um, so um, I was looking at the impact of pesticide residues in soil on diapausing bumblebee queens. And this involved overwintering queens in tubes uh, in a fridge. And because we have to keep the humidity level in those uh, fridges very high, it caused ice to form at the top of the fridge and then the ice melted and the water started accumulating in tubes. Um, and so I came to check on the bees one day and some of the tubes in which the queens were overwintering in were filled with water. Um, of course, when I saw that, I thought that the queens were dead, but when I drained the water, the queens were still alive, which was very, um, very surprising. So that made us wonder, can bumblebee queens survive periods of submersion underwater while overwintering on the ground? At this point, um, I, I had, we had no idea for how long the queens had been underwater, um, but both Dr. Rain and I were very, uh, very curious. Um, so I started to look at the literature to see whether anyone has ever mentioned this scenario before of bumblebee queens potentially being able to survive flooding events during diapause. Um, and no, nothing. I knew that flood resistance was quite common in other insects like springtails, for instance, or sometimes the eggs of some uh, insect species can also be flood resistant. But what about bumblebees? Um, so last year in 2023, I was uh, working as a postdoc in Guelph, and we decided to test whether um, diapausing queens can survive submersion. So to answer that question, we used 123 queens that we placed in artificial hibernation in a refrigerated unit, each in a tube filled with soil for an acclimation period of seven days. And then we added cool top water to the tubes. When you simply add uh, water to the tubes, what happens is that the queen will float at the surface of the water without being completely submerged, uh, which can be similar to a scenario where ground water is rising following rainfall or rapid snow melt um, without completely filling the hibernaculum. But what is more likely to happen uh, if there is a complete inundation when the ground surface is completely covered by water is that the entire hibernaculum is going to be filled with water and the queen will be completely submerged. So to mimic this scenario in another treatment, we used a plunger-like apparatus to push the queen down the water uh, and maintain them underwater. So we had three submersion treatments, one control without any water added, one treatment where the queens were left floating at the surface of the water, and a third treatment where the queens were maintained uh, underwater. The queens were left in these conditions for varying durations, either for eight hours, 24 hours, or seven days, and these durations represent light to moderate inundation effects. So after the submersion period, um, the queens were removed from water. They were transferred to new tubes with soil and kept in, um, in the fridge for eight weeks. So we wanted to assess survival after a few weeks, not just a day or two. But at the same time, we had time constraints. So eight weeks was the maximum we were able to do. And so we assessed survival after one week, four weeks, and eight weeks. And the results were extremely uh, surprising. Even eight weeks after the submersion treatment, queen survival was high across um, all treatments with a mean survival of 90%. And there was no difference in survival among the bees that were not exposed to water and those that were. So even the queens that were exposed to the most intense submersion regime, so those that were maintained on the water for seven days, did very well with a survival rate of 81% compared to 88% for the control group. Um, so the, the results here are extremely clear. Um, Diapausing bumblebee queens can withstand submersion underwater for up to one week, 
which indicates their adaptation to survive periods of flooding in the wild. So this is true at least for um, bombus and patients that come in eastern uh, bumblebee. Now you may wonder how it works, this tolerance to flooding. And like I said, there are other uh, insects that are flood tolerant too. And the mechanisms behind this flood tolerance are probably similar among taxa. So first, um, just a reminder that insects do not have lungs. Instead, they have a tracheal system that allows respiration. And instead of having nostrils like humans, they have spiracles, um, which are tiny holes that, uh, tiny holes where gases can enter and exit. And these spiracles can open and close. So they are not permanently opened. And the reason why they close is to prevent um, water loss. So the entire body of insects is also covered by a cuticle that is waterproof. And so this by itself, plus the fact that the spiracles are so small, may be enough to prevent water from entering um, the tracheal system when the insects are underwater. We know that many diapausing insects, including bumblebee queens, employ discontinuous gas exchange to reduce the risk of desiccation. Um, so it means that the insects uh, keep their spiracles closed for extended periods during diapause with only brief intermittent burst of gas exchange. And so this too can reduce water entry through spiracles during, uh, during um, submersion. And because um, oxygen requirements during diapause is so low, Submerged bumblebee queens may also be able to rely on, on what we call cuticular gas exchange uh, to meet their need for oxygen, which could be facilitated by the presence of trapped uh, air bubbles on their um, body surface. So lots um, of potential adaptations involved here. So before the study, um, this line of research of bumblebee queens being tolerant to inundation has remained in entirely unexplored, um, even within literature specifically dedicated to bumblebee uh, resilience to climate change. And so, of course, it raises tons of questions. And I listed a few keywords here, um, and you'll find in the paper a list of future um, research avenues. One thing that um, we would like to explore in the future is the long-term effects of submersion on bumblebee queens, especially the subsequent impact on uh, the colony and also possible differences among bumblebee species. So we know that um, the populations of bumblebees and patients are doing relatively well in comparison to many other species of bumblebees, um, about one third of which are in decline globally, and exploring whether the ability of bumblebees and patients to withstand flooding plays a role in these differences constitutes, in our opinion, a key avenue for uh, investigation. So that ends the presentation. Um, and of course, this work would not have been possible without the funding sources shown on this slide. And we are um, very grateful for their support. Um, here you have the full paper reference. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out by email. Thank you.